Welcome to the Learning Lab class, Digital Collections with Overdrive and Libby. My name is Melissa and I'm one of the adult and teen services librarians at the Arcadia Public Library. We're going to be taking a look at the resource Overdrive to explore the library's digital collection. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to download the Libby app and its basic navigation. So let's go ahead and jump in. The Libby app is available on both Apple and Android devices. It looks pretty much the same on both devices, so if you have an Apple device, this video will still be of some use to you. In our last series of videos, we took a look at the Overdrive app, which is the original app from Overdrive that allows you to borrow ebooks, e audiobooks, and digital magazines to read on your mobile devices, such as phones and tablets. Then there's this app that we're going to be looking at in this video, which was created after the Overdrive app but both apps let you access the collection. So right now, while both apps are offered, it's really just a matter of preference. So I'm gonna head to the Play Store on my Android tablet. My device is gonna look different than your device since we have different types of devices and different content, but the process will be the same. So I'm gonna go to the Play Store and I'm gonna search for the Libby app. When I find the app, I'm going to go ahead and click on the green install button on the right hand side. It'll take a few minutes to download and install on my device, but once the process is complete, the green install button will have changed to a green open button. I can launch the downloaded app from here, or I can find the icon on my home screen, which is what I'm going to do so that you can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, and hit home and head back to my homepage. And then I'm just gonna look for the app. And here it is, this is what it looks like. And I can go ahead and launch it from here. Uh, a quick note before we open the app, to use the Libby app to browse or search or download items to your device, it's going to need to be connected to the internet over either Wi-Fi or through cellular data. Once it's downloaded to your device, it won't need to be connected to the internet to access what you've downloaded, the ebook, the e audiobook, or the digital magazine, but you will need that connection to get the item to your device. Now that I find the icon on my home screen, I'm going to click on it to open the app, and that's going to bring me to this page where it prompts me to set up my account. To start the process, we're going to select yes if we have a library card. And you have some different options. You have the option to copy your Libby data from another device if you're already using it elsewhere. If you are not, you can search for a library or if you have the location information available on your device, if you have your location turned on, you can have it search for you. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what searching manually looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and click I'll search for a library and I can do the zip code, or I can do the name of the library. So I did the zip code in this case, and we're going to be this result right up top, Arcadia Public Library in the Southern California Digital Library Consortium. Again, the Southern California Digital Library is a consortium of libraries that we share a digital collection with. So I'm going to click on this first result. Now I'm going to need to add my library card. You can click on the words Arcadia Public Library or you can click on the bottom center icon of the girl reading and it's gonna bring you to the right side menu where you can also enter your library card information. So if I click on the little girl, it's gonna open this up and I have the option right there to add a library card. I can also add additional libraries from this menu. So if you have other library cards for systems that use OverDrive, or Libby, you can add those here. But I'm gonna go ahead and click add a library card for Arcadia Public Library. And then it's going to have you enter your library card barcode. Your library card barcode is all the letters, all the numbers starting with PARC000. Once you enter your library card number, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click sign in and it's going to take a moment to contact the library system and get you logged in. Once 
Once it's successful, you will show your library card on the right hand side. It's going to tell you how many loans you have available and how many holds you have already on your account. You can rename the card if you want to give it a name um, so that you know what's going on with it, especially if you have additional cards. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one Arcadia and click save so that it's a little bit easier to know what's going on. Then I'm going to go ahead and click next and it's just going to bring me back to the home page for the Southern California Digital Library. If you know that you are going to only read ebooks with Kindle, you can set that preference here, but if you're not sure, you can absolutely skip that option right now. So I went ahead and skipped it. We're going to take a look at the basic navigation now that we've got our library and our library card number added to the app. You only need to do that the first time that you launch the app. It should save your information. Sometimes after a big update, it may need you to re-enter your library card barcode, but more or less, it is just something you do the first time once you're getting the app set up. You'll see in the center that this is similar to what you would see on OverDrive on the computer. There's a number of browsable lists at the top, and below that are featured topical lists. You'll notice that if something is an ebook or a digital magazine, there's not an icon to indicate this, but if something is an e audiobook, there's going to be a pair of headphones below the cover image, like the She of the Mountains on the right hand side here. You'll notice also that there's no indication if an item is available for immediate checkout or if all the copies are in use. We'll be taking a look at how to tell if an item is available when we do a search. But let's take a look at the buttons at the bottom of the app. The first is the magnifying glass, and this is how you can perform a search for an item. If you click on the dot 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 next to your listed libraries, you can set up some initial filters like format, language, and availability if desired. So if you don't want to see books that you can't check out right now, you can say instead of availability everything, you can say available now. And if you know that you want to borrow, a, say, an e audiobook, you can click on audiobooks as the format so that those search results that you're getting are just going to be within those metrics. And then you would just enter your search just right up top by typing in your search. Okay, so I'm gonna back up and then let's take a look at these other buttons. The icon that is next to the search bar that is shaped like your library card will bring you to the homepage for the Southern California Digital Library. I'm gonna skip over the girl reading for a moment and head to the next icon that looks like a books on a shelf. If I click on that, that is going to be your loans page where all the items that you have checked out to your account will be. The next icon on the bottom there is the timeline for books that you have checked out and put on hold. It kind of is your reading history, say. From either your loans page or your timeline page, you can click on the action button in the upper right hand corner for additional settings. So that action button allows you to synchronize. You can export this timeline somewhere else. You can disable it recording your activity and you can remove all your activities. On the loans page, the actions menu has some additional different options. The first is synchronize shelf. If you have other devices you use Libby with, this would synchronize them across your devices. You can also change the preference as to which way you want to read ebooks, either Kindle or with Libby. If you don't have a preference, you don't need to set one, but you can, it's up to you. The next item is change download rules, which is where you can set your items to automatically download or to download under specific circumstances. So this might be something that you take a look at so that it is downloading and using the data that you want it to use, either Wi-Fi or cellular. Finally, under actions, you also have the ability to suspend all holds and it will 
give you the option to figure out how much time you want to set it for. You can suspend them all for up to 180 days. And then you would select the amount of time and click update holds. Finally, the last button on the bottom is the girl reading. And this is another settings menu where you can manage your notifications, you can add additional libraries or library cards and get help or support. So in this video, we went over how to download Libby and its basic navigation. In our next video, we're going to be taking a look at how to download and listen to an e-audiobook in the Libby app on an Android device. Feel free to reach out to library staff if you have any additional questions.